Welcome to FilmFest Studio. My name is Ilona. I'm the Artistic Director of FilmFest Bremen and I have a special guest with me in the studio today uh, from South Africa. Uh, it's a short film in competition uh, in the innovation sections called Vultures. It's a really good movie and I'm here with the director of the film, Grant Sissens, and he's joining us from Johannesburg. Hi. 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 Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to be on here. Nice to meet you too. I see it's a sunny day where you are it is we've had a lot of rain but thank goodness the sun has come out in the last few days so thank goodness for that perfect it's the spring is just starting in bremen as well after a very long and wet winter so we appreciate it <laughs> so um yes uh your film is striking for a lot of different reasons and as i mentioned in the introduction it's featured in innovation um also because i think uh it's uh the way it was made is quite unique it's an animation but a very special sort and i think it was also developed during uh, the lockdown phase so maybe you can dive a little bit into the artistic approach you took to create this film under these, uh, yes, uh, the COVID restrictions and how you came up with such creative solutions to to make this movie come true. Well, thanks so much for the feedback on the film. That's awesome. Um, and it's obviously amazing to be part of this festival. Um, it actually started as a live action or was intended mm -hmm. to be a live action film. And then uh, it, sort of the lockdown brought weird, you know, sometimes uh, when your opportunities are restricted, you you find ways around them and and, and and find creative ways to resolve you know problems. So, we we had this film in, in the wings, and then when the lockdown happened, it it then morphed into this other style, this sort of cut out animation style. And what was what worked so well under the lockdown conditions for that was that obviously it didn't require any kind of sort of interaction as a live film would have. And I mean, our only sort of real restrictions then were we got somebody to do the voiceover through Zoom and WhatsApp. So that that wasn't ideal, but it, but it obviously worked. And so, yeah, it was an interesting experiment in terms of uh, what to do when you have certain artistic uh, restrictions in place and how to creatively, uh, creatively resolve those problems. And I think also the equipment you used was kind of like, I think you even, I read somewhere you recorded it with an iPhone or something very sort of small and also the lights being sort of improvised. And the result is artistically such an interesting combination of materials and uh, colors. So it uh, looks incredible, but I think it was born out of this, uh, yes, also kind of the reduction you had to sort of like uh, enforce during the pandemic. So yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah, um, it was an iPhone, an iPhone two, an old iPhone seven, I think. Um, but it's just so interesting because obviously, with the miniature perspective, it makes everything seem slightly bigger. So you have these strange cutouts that actually appear to be sort of a normal size, but it's obviously because of the the size of the iPhone. So yeah. So yeah, it works perfectly, and. Um the film itself, it deals a lot, uh, I think, with, uh, with uh, also the racial tensions and also differences in status in uh, the society in South Africa that are still present uh, today. And uh, there is two uh, very, uh, the central characters, they are very different, but they do have something in common, I think. Maybe you can elaborate a bit of the idea of um, the common core that they share, but also the differences that keep them from actually interacting the way it would benefit both. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the inequality gap in, in South Africa, I think we're now top in the world, which is not a good list to be on. But I think that's, I think we're now we're top of that list in terms of inequality. And that's obviously been a prevailing thing for, for so many years. And then what it's done is it's created these strange tensions where, and strange roles as well, where you have sort of uh, the, the owner of the house and then the the gardener that works there and then they connect in some ways or try to connect on a human level but then there are these very strict rules of engagement for for how they sort of are supposed to behave within these sort of racially uh, segregated lines so yeah and it's and, and you know as much as as much as there is a drive now and things are, are are changing it's still been a very very long process it's taken us very long to even get to this point 
where you don't have a certain culture just dominating, you know, and especially the mon minority dominating. So it's taken us even this amount of time to get to a point where people are finally allowed to take part in the economy and all of those kinds of things. But but the truth is, to a large extent, in the in the suburbs, in the white suburbs, these things do persist. These these roles, these carefully. Uh, defined roles persist and 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 that's the truth of the film i guess um in, in in lots of ways and then there's this human need to connect which they never quite do so there's i guess there's a sadness to that as well but there's a reality to it too and i think there is a very profound loneliness in both characters in in different ways or stemming from from, from different backgrounds but um and also i think uh there is a one really crucial scene uh, where one of the characters has to decide to either like act or not act and uh, he decides to not act but I think it's also out of respect because to to uh, not overstep this invisible line that has always defined their relationship and I found that very striking in the film. Right and I, and I, and I suppose there's you know thank you that's amazing feedback um, but it's it's yeah, there's a because the, the the difficulty with that character was was how to have him behave in that way without it coming across as as callous and and uncaring, you know. And and in some ways you could kind of you could you could accept that because of the the clear uh, division between the two. But the trick was, I guess, and and we sort of tried as best as possible was to present him as this human character, both of them, as as much as was possible in the short film but that his actions, you understood his actions. You, you, you understood why he, he didn't act in that moment and chose to do what he did. And, and a large part of it, as you said, was, was out of respect, um, acknowledging the action that someone has taken and accepting that for what it is. And I think it also helps that we do have the voiceover telling the story from his perspective. I was uh, going to ask you about, uh, because I thought the voiceover was really well done and um, it added another sort of layer of meaning to, to the film. So you said uh, you, that was actually uh, like, um, not you were not there when it was recorded, right? So how did that process work of directing this kind of a voiceover without being present? It, it was it was interesting. It was it was tricky, uh, and luckily the the the, um, the, uh, the guy who voiced it over for us was was amenable to doing it over a Zoom call. And I think we recorded it on a phone on that side. So so I spoke to him, and then he had his another iPhone um, on that side recording the audio and then sent me that audio. And then it was a case of just trying to integrate it to make it work. Wow. It, it came out beautifully. And I think, uh, the ending of the film, because it's such a, such a, uh, such a sadness running throughout the movie. But I think the ending also gives you a little bit, a hint of hope that the future could potentially be different. Is that, is that uh, sort of like also what you intended to, to kind of uh, like let a little bit of the light come in? Is that Yeah, I mean, I think the, obviously the, the, the danger with, with having quite sort of melancholic ideas and, and films is that you almost, you kind of want a bit of light and shade, I think, you know, it's, you don't want that sort of single note, the very sad sort of feeling, unless, unless that's what you're really going for. But I guess generally human experience tends to be light and shade, really, up and down. Um, and so, yeah, I think it, the idea was to, and maybe it spoke to a bigger political thing, was that hopefully there is a bit of a change happening and that's the light at the end of, of, of that tunnel. You know, you obviously never know where that character goes to. And um, there's a path that's set, I guess, in some ways or, a, or or that's opened in the film, but but you don't know the outcome for that character. But maybe there's a the, the, the glimmer of hope that you're talking about is maybe a transformation that's happening on a sort of wider political spectrum, hopefully. Yes, definitely, hopefully. And uh, is that is that uh, political um, films? Is that something that's important for you to include in your work? Uh, some kind of political context in your work? I, I think it is, and I think in some ways, 
coming from South Africa, it's 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 part of the fabric of our lives, you know, and such a a deeply rooted thing. And I and I think we, you know, we we've, we've done one or two films before that. We did a documentary on a on a on a man that on a white uh, guy that moved to Hillbrow in a city to sort of empathize more with people living in the inner city and to understand better what they were going through as opposed to his uh, middle class upbringing and to try and offer better understanding. So I think I think it's that. I mean, I think we've also, the, the, the team that I work with, we've also decided that um, film is almost the sort of greatest empathy machine um, because it's such a great way of, of laying bare somebody's life and then allowing that to sort of flow and connect with the audience. And, 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 and maybe that's one of the, the, the best ways, and maybe not the best way, but one of the ways of, of really kind of engendering um, empathy. Yeah, and I think film can also be like a very good starting point for discussion. We always uh, experience this. This is why it's so lovely to have the live screenings back in the cinema, uh, the reaction of the audience, because um, you have the empathy for the characters, but then you, you in your mind address or think about the bigger issues behind the film in a, in a very different way from just reading statistics. So it has a much bigger impact, I think. So film plays a definite role in this discourse, I think. So, it's, so yeah, thank you for making, making films that do have that kind of message. I think they are yeah, much th needed. Thank you. I, th I mean, I, I think that's true. And I, I suppose if you know, even if it's not necessarily uh, explicitly a, a political film that you've made, uh, if there's only a, a feeling that you've communicated, at least, you know, afterwards, audiences can talk about that, if, if that sparks interest. You know, it's like, re it's like reading a really good book or novel where if, if it's done in a certain way, it will spark, you'll, you'll speak to people about that novel. You'll want to talk about it and the ideas contained within it. So yeah, I mean, that, that's amazing. Thank you, that, that feedback. So um, best of luck for the competition. Vultures will feature in innovation and thank you for joining us at the studio today. Oh, awesome, thank you. And thank you so much for having the film as part of the festival. We're, we're really excited about it. It's just, a, it's, a, it's a privilege, it's an honor. So thank you so much.